I can solve real world problems using system of linear equations. Read together. One, two, three. I can solve real world problems using systems of linear equations. Do we need a fair model? No, we already know what systems are. So therefore, our fair model should have looked something like this, and so on and so forth, right? And yesterday, we started uh, with applications, and I showed you the video of me going to get the drinks. Remember that? And we started with that one as uh, our first problem. But we started by writing down our problem-solving strategy, which was cute. You guys remember this? So we wrote all the steps, circle important numbers, underline the question, box important terms, exclude necessary information, and draw picture diagrams, and so on. Our first problem was the spice, chai, and matcha drinks. And what kind of problem was this? Item and cost. Then we went to uh, Reagan uh, buying um, sheets. And Sheets, right? And they were what? Belt and cardstock. And we solved that one. Uh, let's do this one together. You don't have to copy the problem. Let's start from the table. Ready? I want, I want you to write example number two on your paper. Example two. Let me read you the problem and set up the table. So the table it should be the same setup as always, right? How many lines down? How many across? Two. So one, two, three across and everything nice and straight like mine. Bam, there it is. All right, and it reads, Noah spent $14.85 to buy 13 flowers. Aww. He bought lilies, which cost $1.25, and tulips, which cost 90 cents. How many of each flower did Noah buy? Okay, I'll give you time to fill in your table, please. Let's see how you do with that. All right, let's see. What did we label this first column over here on top? So I'm going to use a capital L, lilies. Okay, what did we label the next column? Capital T for tulips. And of course, the last one is always what? Total. Okay, I'm going to switch colors to red. What do we write on the next row? Items. And in parentheses, what items are we talking about today? Flowers. All right. Do we know how many lilies? No. What can we label this? L. L, capital L. Do we know how many tulips? No. So we label it capital T. And right here, the total of items of flowers are 13. So far, so good? Yes? All right. Cost. Let's see. Um, Marissa, what do I write here? That is correct. And then? That is correct. And here? And so we got that. That is correct. So let's write our system. Our system is L plus T equals 13. And 1.25 L plus 0.90 T equals 14.85. Julian, focus. All right. What method do you want to use for this one? Which variable would you like to eliminate? L? Hands if you want to eliminate L. Hands if you want to eliminate T. It's about Evenly split, okay, paper, rock, scissors, whatever. Oh, wow. Let's eliminate T. So uh, we're going to multiply times what? Negative 0.90. 
distribute, distribute, distribute. So that gives us negative 0.90L, negative 0.90T equals negative 90, 90. Mm. We're gonna need a calculator. Very good. 11.7 or 11.70. Let's go. All right. Finish it off, please. See what you get. Okay, let me see what I do from there. Um, did you? Okay, Julian, go. I said I know you're going to take me. What? Because you're spamming me on the warm up. <laughs> <laughs> Julian, pick someone. How about 3x negative 2y? We can go to the right of me. And then let's go down to. Okay. Uh, one, two, three. Marissa, go. What did you get from here? 0.35 equals 3.15. Hands we got up to right there. That is correct. We solve by dividing by 0.35. Divide by 0.35. L equals, let's see, 3.15 divided by 0.35. Move this twice, move this twice. 35 fits into 315 nine times. Let's see, nine times five, that's 45. I got four. Nine times three, that's 27 plus four, that's 31. Hey, evenly, so that's nine. Perfect. All right, what do I do from there? Marissa, pass it to someone. Fatima. L plus T equals 13, 9 plus T equals 13, minus 9 minus 9, T equals 4. All right, let's answer the question. What was the question? How many of each flower did Noah buy? Statement. Pass someone who can give me a statement. Noah bought nine lilies and four tulips. Ten Q. And did you got that? Can we have a favorite shot come through? You are already with cost, item and cost kind of problems. That's some four slides, four slides, four slides. Okay. Let's crank it up a notch, yes? Okay, turn your paper over. Here we go. Now we're moving to a new type of problem. Okay, here we go. Problem number three says, with a tailwind, an airplane makes a 900-mile trip in two and a quarter hours. On the return trip, the plane flies against the wind and makes the trip in three hours. What is the plane speed? What is the wind speed? Copy that, please. I'll give you some time, and then I'll go over the process. Copy that. 
All right. So example three says, what with a tailwind, an airplane makes a 900-mile trip in two and a quarter hours. On the return trip, the plane flies against the wind, makes a trip in three hours. What is the plane speed and what is the wind speed? If you notice, this is no longer an item and cost type of problem. This one is what we call a rate problem. But specifically, it's a rate and distance problem. And I'll elaborate more on that. <clears throat> However, to set up the original table as the others, what did I say yesterday? That from now on, for systems, we're going to do three lines down to a cross. Is that correct? Okay, writing utensils down, please. All right, here we go. So with that said, three lines down, two across, should look something like this. One, two, three, two across. Bless you. All right. So now that we have our table, look at the setup for this one. Since this one does not have items and costs, now this one's going to be set up in a slightly different way. Now we're going to use an actual formula. Now in science, you guys had or should have already covered a formula that has science, uh, has has distance, time, and rate. Is that correct? Does that sound yeah. kind of familiar? So I'm going to use a formula that is very similar to the one you use. Here it goes. And I'm going to write it on the top as my label. So here we go. This first column, I'm going to uh, label it rate, then times time equals distance. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Guess what? That never changes in these kind of problems. So you remember what I just said? Okay, so now check this out. The only thing that's going to be different on this one will be the rows. Ready? Here we go. Write your tensors down, look up. I'm going to start with red. What information do they give me first? That the first trip is with a tailwind, 900 mile and two and a quarter hours. So do we know where the 900 mile goes? It's the distance right here. Do we know where the two and a quarter goes? The time, 2.25. So then tailwind, I'm going to label this tailwind. Now what does that specific word mean. It means that it's going to do something to the rate of the plane. So for example, you guys have been out there when your teacher has you guys running the mile, yes? Have you guys been out there when it's windy? Okay, what happens when the wind hits you in your tail? Does that increase your speed or decrease your speed? Increase. So check this out. So it, they're talking about the plane. So the plane will increase with the wind speed. Does that make sense? Here it goes again. On the tailwind trip, the plane will be increased by the wind speed. The time it takes is 225, and this is 900. All right. Let me go to the next set of information. It did a trip against the wind in three hours. And how long, what was the distance? 900, because it's a return trip, right? So I write what? 900. Then I write what? Three and I, I'm going to write against wind. So it would be what? If it's against wind, what happens when you're running and you're going against the wind? It, it decreases. So you're going to do P minus W. Does that make sense? Copy that, please. Let's go from the corner. <laughs> Okay, so as you're writing your table, let's see. Here's my table, three lines down, two across. What doesn't change? The formula. What is the formula? Rate times time equals distance. What was the first set of information? It's, they talk about the tailwind. They make the trip in 900 miles in two and a half hours, two and a quarter. So for the tailwind, we wrote two, two and a quarter, 900. 
for the rate, we know that the plane's rate will increase with the wind's rate. Yes? For the second row, on the return trip, on the return trip, it's against the wind. I wrote it here. That means that the plane's rate will decrease with the wind. It was in three hours and the same distance. So now, now we have a system here. Let me show you the system. Look up. I'm going to write this first equation. P plus W times 225. Does that make sense? But instead of writing a big multiplication sign here, what am I going to use? Parentheses 2.25 equals 900. Why did I do parentheses? Because we have how many terms here? So if we were to distribute, make sure we distribute to both. Does that make sense? Let me write my second equation. I'm going to leave a little bit of space here in between, and I'm going to write P minus W in what? Parentheses. And what goes outside? 3 equals 900. Okay, before you copy that, look up to the screen. Look up. Now, right away, our noodle would want to do this. Distribute, distribute, and simplify and start doing something with it, right? But in order for us to save an extra step, I'm going to get rid of this factor that's multiplying. What is the inverse? We're going to divide by 2.25. Whatever we do to one side, we do to the other side. What does that leave us? What is this P plus W? Does everybody see that? Equals to 900 divided by 2.25. 900 divided by 2.25. Move this over twice. Add two zeros. 225 into 900 is four times. Zero, zero, zero. Bring down another zero, zero. So this is 400. Are we there so far? Now look at this one. I'm going to do the same as here. I'm going to get rid of this factor. So what do I do? Divide by three. Divide by three. We're left with P minus W equals 300. Does this look a little bit more familiar to solve? Yes. yes. So copy that and finish solving that. Let's see what you get. Give you a head start. Copy that. Okay, let's see where we're at so far. Uh, Mel, help me from there. What do I do? From here we can eliminate W, that is correct, and combine the rest. So what do we have? P. 2P equals 700. Hands have you got up to right there? That is correct, because we combine this one with this, this with this. So we solve for P, divide by 2. Therefore, P equals. Okay, what does that mean? Tell your neighbor what this means, please. Miles per hour so far, yes. What else? What does the P stand for? Everyone, the plane speed is what? Miles per hour. All right, so then which equation do we want to use to figure out the W, the top or the bottom? Oh. So we write P plus W equals 400, but instead of P, we write 350. Bring down the W equals 400 minus 350 minus 350. W equals 50 miles per hour. All right. Let's answer the question. What is the plane speed? What is the wind speed? What would be our statements? No, no. Um, the um, Actually, just just the just just plane speed. So the plane speed is 350 miles per hour, comma, uh, and the wind speed. is 50 miles per hour, 10 So Let's see, one point for the table, one point for the system, one point for the solution for one variable, one point for the solution of a second, and one point for the statement. How many points total? 
Five. Five. Are we there? Yeah. Okay. So this is the first one we do on right. Show me with your finger how fingers how complete you are so far up to right there. We got some threes, fours, three, fours, three, fours. Okay. So let's do another one. But let me recap just to make sure that we got this. Here it goes. We started off with a rate and distance problem. Three lines down, two across. What did I say never changes? The formula. Rate times time equals distance. The top row we did for the tailwind, the bottom row for against the wind. Why did we write P plus W? Because the tailwind increases the rate of the plane. Why did we write minus? Because the against the wind it does what? Decrease the rate of the plane. Are we there? And everything should be obvious from there. All right, example four. Don't copy this, but I want you to start with a table. Turn your paper over or get another paper. See if you can do the table without looking at your notes. Right. So try to do the setup of the table without looking at your notes. Do as much as you can. It says. I'll underline stuff so you guys have information to do. Let's see. Uh, with a tailwind, an airplane makes a 600 mile trip in one and a half hours. The return trip, the plane flies against the wind and makes the trip in two and a half hours. Okay, set up your table, see what you get. I'm going to start my table, three lines down, one, two, three, two across. One, two. All right. Let's see. What goes here? Everyone. Rate. Rate. What goes here on this line? Time. Right there. Time. And then? Equals. Distance. Hands we got up to right there. Okay. What are we writing on the first one? We're writing tailwind. What we're, are we writing on the second one? Against wind. Okay. Let's see. Help me out with tailwind. Isaac, what goes here? Time. Distance. All right. What goes here? Mm -hmm. Same 600. Hands if you got up to right there. Okay, let's write our system. We got P plus W parentheses times what? 1.5 equals 600. Our second one is P minus W times 2.5 equals 600. Isaac, pass someone. Brody, what do I do to the first equation? To both sides. So therefore, it's P plus W equals what? Well, look. What is 60 divided by 15? But since we have two zeros at the end, it's 400. Okay? about the second one? So we're left with P minus W equals 600 divided by 2.5. Who got it? 200 what? 240. And we got that. Okay. Do we know what to do from there? Yeah. Yes. Continue from there. Avril, what do I do? Cross out the W's and I end up with what? 
Mm -hmm. That is correct. Divide by two, divide by two. So what is the plane speed, everyone? The engine is 20 miles per hour. Miles per hour. And then we get which equation? The top or the bottom? Top. Top. P plus W equals 400. But instead of P, I write 320 plus W equals 400 minus 320 minus 320. W equals 80 miles per hour. And you have your statement, right? Okay. Yeah. Hands and show me with your fingers how comfortable you are with these so far. Okay, I got some four, five, four, five. Okay. Now check this out. The the home plate, or you might see in the book, you're gonna see a presentation very similar to this one for the rate. Look up. Look at this one. Don't copy this, just pay attention. It says Addison paddles a canoe nine miles upstream in four and a half hours. And then she goes downstream and takes how long? Is this a rate problem in distance? Yes. So three lines. So watch. Rate times time equals distance. Are we there so far? Mm -hmm. if, they, if this was with a plane, this would be what? Tailwind, right? What does that mean? That it's going to increase the speed. But look, is upstream increasing? No, that's like going uphill. So which one will be increasing the speed? So what would we write here? Down stream. Now what would we write for paddle? What variable? P. So therefore it increases with the what? Current. Current. Or what other the, uh, variable do I use for? Very good. W for water. What was the time for the uh, downstream? 1.5. What was the distance? Nine. Nine miles. Okay, let me go to the next one. The other one was what? Upstream. So what do I write here? P minus W. What is the time? 4.5 and it's nine distance. You see the setup is about the same? Just the warning is a little bit different. Let me show you a different one. Ready? Look up. Look at this one. A boat can travel 36 miles downstream in two hours. Coming back upstream, the boat takes three hours. You see how it's very similar? It's still a rate problem. Okay, we'll stop right there. Your home play for tonight. Here it goes. Copy this code. It's KCWHR, and you're doing numbers two to eight evens only. A good one, guys. Enjoy your home play. Reminder, there's no tutoring today, by the way, unless you want to stop and say hey. Yay. Anyways, bye.